wanted to try something, a breakfast and chat before one-on-one. -on -one. So we've got toast, buttered toast, and coffee with the special mushrooms. And when I say special, I mean like the life-giving ones, like lion's mane. And today is actually, today is the lion's gate, which if you're into like the whole like synchronicities and spiritual numbers, angel numbers, all that stuff, eight, eight is what they call the lion's gate. And I love any reason to celebrate. Any reason. Any reason to celebrate is a good reason. Say good morning to Calcifer. <laughs> okay. So a couple of real fun topics that you won't be able to do full-blown classes on right now, this second. All of the things. I have I tend to get real topic happy. I want to I want a class. I want to schedule a class on the art of war and basically war and love. Everyone says that there is all's fair in love and war, but I don't I don't think that's true. And in fact, if you my take as I was reading The Art of War by Sun Tzu, it seemed to me like a like a like a textbook on romance where it's a textbook on romance. Anyway, and I've got a few points on that. And then another class that I want to do a full, at least one full class on, maybe a full series, is the unicorn tapestries, specifically the unicorn tapestries in Paris, France, at the Clooney Museum, and I have a whole adventure blog, a, a jet set girl adventurer, love lifestyle adventurer blog, vlog on when I visited the Clooney Museum specifically to see these tapestries, and it was such a magical experience. However, all of the unicorn tapestries, and if you know anything about the unicorn tapestries, there are there is a set in New York, and there is also a set in the Clooney Museum in Paris, France. So there's one in the cloisters at the Met in New York, Manhattan, and there's one in Paris, France. And these are supposedly two different series. One is the the hunt for the unicorn and in Paris it is the lady and the unicorn. The lady and the unicorn goes through a series of the senses. So maybe that would be really really exciting to do a series on both. And I did start a meditation that is that brings in several of these aspects of healing and the the imagery of the unicorn. It's awesome. I love it. So I feel like I I feel like I might be at a place where I share it with everyone even before it's officially, officially, officially like done, 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 done. But that's that's part of the creator's world. What else I wanted to talk with you about, and this is probably the thing that I really wanted to talk about, is how do you save your marriage? How do you, let me bring up my notes. It just started everything. I was all like, make breakfast, do all of the things. These are some of the, some of the initial topics that I wrote down, how to help him be a better man. How can you help him be a better man? And should you, before you pack your bags and leave him, what should you know? What can you do? What? to dive into before you pack your bags and leave. How agreeing with him may be the ninja goddess move that brings him closer. How to bring your relationship back from the, the brink of separation. Why good men don't treat you like the goddess you are. What a man needs from you in order to be the man you need. How your love and feminine energy can revive a frayed relationship. 
why you need to connect with your inner goddess when you want him closer, ways to communicate when things don't feel good, and ways to feel better, period. Just ways to feel better, ways to feel better when things don't feel good in your marriage and when he won't listen to you, but you've not given up. So that was, after some really heartbreaking conversations, I'm like, okay, marriage stuff, reconnecting the relationship stuff. What do we need to know? And some of these things will be a reiteration. It's getting it into your system. It's sharing the information in new ways so that it sinks in. It's getting the keys in. It's getting different imageries into your brain so that when you when you're going about your day it's not a hard i have to think about this i have to figure it out and this is so important when it comes to women who need feminine energy as the their feminine energy journey their love lifestyle journey it the core key element is their feminine energy. That is the healing part. It's going to heal themselves and also ripple out into every single area of their life. So that's, that's the, that's the, that's the crux of it. So let's have a sit in a chat. Let's have a sit in a chat. What makes you feel feminine? And I'm not talking feminine aesthetic. That's a thing. And for the longest time, I didn't even, if you know anything about me, you know, I have a deep, deep, deep appreciation for Asian culture, Eastern culture, philosophy, all of that stuff. And even with my deep appreciation of everything Chinese, I didn't quite understand how feminine energy would apply to me besides looking like a girl. And it was pretty quickly, as I started to learn about feminine energy, the energy exchange in relationship that even aesthetics, like doing your hair, doing your makeup, wearing the right clothes, wearing the right colors, that these things really are masculine structures to support feminine energy. So you might start with, what do I think? <laughs> I hope this doesn't bother you. <laughs> I just really wanted to make this a kind of what informal type feeling I maybe mean, you can grab your snacks and digest what we're talking about so when we say feminine energy when we say feminine what comes up for you first and if you're anything like so many of the women who find themselves getting so much from this work because We've all been trained to be masculine. To take on masculine energy roles. To think for everybody. To think through how everybody's going to be feeling. Instead of feeling our way through. Experiencing. Being in the moment. Being present. And expressing ourselves through this process. I have this very, very, very strong, nasty voice that comes up still quite often. That's all like, that is superfluous. And I have a funny story. I, I think it's hilarious. Some backstory. My husband is a, among so many other things, he is a very good massage therapist. Created modalities with, it's, it's brilliant. Anyway. And in his practice, he incorporates hot stones, aromatherapy, all of these things. And the first time I had a hot stones session, this was this fell into the area of superfluousness, where seeing the spa magazines, you know, oh, that would be nice. Have you ever caught yourself saying that? Oh, that would be nice. But, you know, 
if it was free. I don't want to pay for that. It's superfluous. It's just frou-frou stuff. There's no substance to it. That's what I thought about hot stones. Have you ever had a hot stone session? And if you think that way, I'm like, you still think that way after having a hot stone session. It's really not your thing. And there's something to be said about exploring your options, really exploring your options. And that's, we should talk about that. After I had that hot stone session, I was all like, I get it. I get it. So consider this for you. Catch that. Catch that part of you that says, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. It's too much. It's not enough. It's too expensive. And see if you can connect with. And honestly, whatever that thing is in front of you may not be for you. You may not need it. You may not want it. That may be what you come to recognize after you have let yourself receive the offer in front of you. And how does this all tie back into how is this going to save my marriage? How is this going to bring a man and my relationship back from the frayed brinks of... I want to make this as dramatic as possible, because if we can be dramatic here and express ourselves and try things, then where it really matters, you're going to have the courage, the tenacity, the steel where you need it to be so you can be soft, receptive, so you can be who you need to be, who you want to be in the high stakes scenario. So I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise this is all going to tie back in together. Hmm. All right. We have to leave this for here. We'll come back. If you're a woman who wants more fun, more connection, more romance, more joy in your life and relationships, make sure you're subscribed to my Love Lifestyle newsletters for tips, inspiration, and exclusive trainings at lovecoachnatalina.com. Welcome to the evening session. I'm hoping that you have something fun to snack on, a fun beverage, something. So today I'm Natalina Love and today is August 8th. It is the, what they call the Lion's Gate. And for you love lifestyle people out there, for all of you love lifestyle girlies, wanting to live your best life, living your best life, affirming your best life, vibing with where your life doesn't feel like your best life, then all of these occurrences, all of these invitations to celebrate to say happy Monday, to say happy Tuesday, to say happy Wednesday, to say happy Thursday, to say any of the happy days. I'm like, should we go through each of each day of the week? <laughs> Maybe we should. But anyway, noticed. Um, yeah, let's get into it. I started, I gave you, I gave you this teaser of all of these, all of these, all of these topics for how to help you save your marriage. And I asked you for your confidence. I said, please, 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 please. I promise all of this will tie in together. So let's let's go through let's go through some of the let's go through some of these questions or topics actually. So can you help him be a better man? Can you help him be a better man? I'm going to actually pull up my notes. All right. Can you help him be a better man? The best way, the absolute best way to inspire a man to be better is by living and expressing your values. 
Okay. I, I feel like I'm, I'm like, I really, I really want us all to get comfortable here. Cause when, when we go one through one, I, I feel like I can get real, real stiff. And I was just in a very, very flow state. It, there was, there was magic. I felt some magic. I felt giggling. There was a lot to celebrate in the answers to some pretty, some pretty heartbreaking let me put let me put it like this. The questions, the conversations, the moments that inspired this list of topics, subject lines. Again, heartbreaking. But the answer can be fun. We can find we can find in even just the tiniest little bit Oops, I bumped I bumped my stool. I made I bumped my makeshift desk here. Even the tiniest little bit, even the tiniest little bit of relief, the tiniest little shifts can make a world of a difference. So I'm got my I've got my fun beverage. If you want to grab a and refresh your beverage, I will wait for you. Push pause. I'll wait. We'll wait for you. And um, let's just let's just go down this list. So can you? Big headline: Help him be a better man. And can you? Okay. The best way to inspire a man to be better. The very 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 best way to inspire a man to be better is to be in your own values. And this is big because so many of us, th this is where the interrupt happens, where we're not in alignment with our beliefs, with our values, maybe. And, and that's not your fault. Okay. This is not an invitation to blame. It really isn't. And if your nasty voice is like a lot of ours out there, if yours like mine, then there is a there is this instinct to just tear you down at every single opportunity okay and we're not going to do that we're going to notice it and breathe love into this space that's our first interrupt okay so living and expressing your values you just i'm just i'm so aware like my shoulders just crawling up like don't blame yourself what are your values we how do we get there yes yes those are some those are some questions that we may be going into in a lot of ways this has nothing to do with him actually that's that's what we want to underline Living and expressing your values in a way that has nothing to do with him, because that's going to take a lot of your energy, lots and lots and lots of your energy and completely shift the dynamic because it's not going to be directed at him. And we'll talk lots more about that. I said it and we'll say it again. We'll say it again. We'll say it again and again and again and again until it clicks. It has nothing to do with him. We want to help him be a better man, but it's not about him. It really isn't. I feel like that's an underwhelming answer, but like we could move on all at the same time. What, and if there's someone specific that you're wondering, how can I help this man be better? How do I help this man be better? Is this a criticism? about him oh man there's a whole rabbit hole okay maybe we circle back to this question okay so let me know where you land there and we'll we'll come back to it the core point here though is when you are living your values and i know i'm broken record here i'm saying this over and over and over again when you're living your values when you're expressing your values and not as a oh well you should do this or you should do that or um isn't this nice? Can't you see how I'm doing X, Y, Z? This is a demonstration. This is a performance of what you believe is right. And it's very, very different from actually living your values and what's important to you. Is when your energy is, wow, this feels so important to me. Wow, this feels 
I feel really passionate about this. Gosh, when I look at that, I just feel so sad and torn up inside. That's going to leave a very different, you're going to have a very, very different relationship with what is better, what is good. And we should talk about that too. All of this, your relationship with what, where you're going in life is going to be very, very different. And if that's where your focus is, if that's where your vision is, if that's where your heart is on beautifying your life, beautifying the community, putting your, putting your energy into where your passion and your heart is, there is a magnetic field. There is a magnetic quality to that. And the men who are for you, who want to be your partners, who want to align with you, even in not romantic ways, but I think for the most part, we're, we're speaking in a romantic sort of dynamic. They're going to, they're going to gravitate that way. How can I be of service to this woman? How can I you know, they will improve themselves. They will. Okay. And if they don't, then we need to be asking other questions and we can. Okay. Next question. Subject. Before you pack your bag and leave him, what should you know and what can you do? Some of the least helpful advice, some of the least helpful advice we've all seen in the forums are, girl, get out of there, run, red flag. That is some of, as true as it may be in some of these circumstances, it's not helpful. It's not helpful. And I'm reading my notes. I'm going to read my notes for this. Here's the deal. This is what I wrote. Here's the deal. Until we hit our place, until we hit that place where our give a damn's broke, until we hit that point, no one's going anywhere. No one's going anywhere. Okay. If your bag... If your bag is already packed, if you're already packed, that's a very different conversation. If your bag's already packed, you're already mostly out the relationship. You've been not in the relationship for a while. You're already out the door. And this isn't going to be the advice that you need if that's the case. Okay. Everyone saying, everyone saying, oh, run, get out of there, red flag. Those voices, if you're already in a point, if you're already in a point where you are, you're packed, you're packed up, you're ready to go, you are done, you don't have anything else to give. Like you are, you're exhausted and like you're you're even maybe maybe even too exhausted to get angry. That's a thing. Okay? That's a thing. If that's where you're at and your bag's packed, all of those voices are just going to be your cheer squad. You're going to be on board with it and it's going to feel very very different. But unless you're in that spot, unless you're in that spot, it's it's not really helpful advice okay when it's not you it can be easy it can still be easy to want to lead with ultimatums do you know what i'm talking about where you exclaim passionately i'm leaving i want a divorce or we should just quit you know and no shame I'm saying this, no shame. This is girl talk here.
there's a part of us that really needs to feel expressed, even though we are not ready to follow up on what we're saying. We don't want that. We want we want him to fight for us. What we're what we're wanting is very different than what we're saying. I get it. It can be very, very, very tempting to lead with the ultimatum. And if that's not authentic for you, if that's not congruent with what you want in your heart of hearts, with what you want for the relationship, I want to give you another way. How about this? Can you take and I'm using yeah this morning this morning we were having toast talk and now we're we're having fun beverages and and um and having a different conversation and I'm a little bit surprised at my the the flow between the two take a bite out of the dream because I feel like I've got a more a different a different energy here can you take a bite out of the dream what is the dream what is the dream take a more ma manageable bite into the dream so what is the dream It's just way too easy to fall into the pain and complaints. Too easy. How often do you catch yourself there? Oh, why is it this way? What, catching yourself whining, catching yourself complaining. Why is this this way? Why is he that way? Why can't I have this? Why can't he be that? Why, 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 why? If you can catch a why, if you can catch yourself asking why, you'll... The percentage of times that that why is connected to a complaint is probably pretty high. So if you can catch the why and just pour love on yourself, breathe, 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 breathe down, lean back, open heart, touch something. What's the dream? How easy is that? Can you start leaning into what if I could be happy? What if you could be happy? What happens if you entertain that question? If every time you settle in to ask yourself the question, okay, if every time you settle in to ask yourself the question, that question, what if I could be happy? If every time you settle in and ask yourself that question, you notice a force field of blame that shoots through your whole system about what he's done, what that man is doing, what he's done, what he's doing to block you from your happy ever after from the happiness that you want. If you notice this force field of thoughts and looping, just looping, 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 having a grand old time, <laughs> your thoughts doing that because that's where they're going, you know. Looping around why you can't be happy. All of this, all of this energy, all of this thinking, all of this emotion, all this intention around why I can't be happy, why I can't be happy. I could be happy if, I could be happy if, I could be happy if. All of this is a force field around you. Then that's where I want you to meet yourself. As often as I feel like I can, 
I'll talk about law of attraction stuff. And I know that can get, I can get, that can get, that, that can be its own rabbit hole. It can be its own rabbit hole. So meet yourself there. Not making it right. Not making it right. Oh, yes, I can't be happy. Unless you can level with yourself and say, you know what? That is my happy. That's you meeting yourself. So that might look like, ah, okay. Right now, this is all I can see. Right now, all I can see is the pain. Love yourself exactly where you are. And bit by bit, bite by lovely little bite, you'll find space open. Space will open for you. The force field will open for you. Where you can lean into that dream. You can lean more and more and more into this dream. And from there, it gets so much more exciting. And we're able to incorporate more and more experiences courting the dream. And I love that word! courting courtship it brings us into the romance into the dynamic that we want just by playing with the words so note what are your favorite words note what words come to mind when you think of the dream when you think of what you want when you think of ultimate romance what is that what is that for you yes i can leave and when I think of packing a bag and walking out that door, I feel anchored to the floor. I feel like I've been buried by a mountain. I know I feel so unhappy. I've seen myself not smiling. I feel my posture just completely just, I feel myself not happy. I feel angry. I feel angry and sad even seeing how some part of me wants to stay. I feel so ang angry and so sad seeing how some part of me is so rooted to being here like this. And, and I'm more willing to meet myself in this place. See how that maybe softens this place, okay? See what that does for you. How agreeing with him is the ninja goddess move to bring him closer. Do you know this one? You know, Aikido or um, there's lots of different martial arts modalities that pull in this concept martial arts are great again another nod to the art of war here <laughs> and if you noticed cameo easter egg here this book here the art of war and this is my my uh oops, set that down really hard this is my annotated copy it's this was kind of hard there so it's like there's there's two versions. One is like the commentary and one is just the straight up translation and everybody's wanted to translate it, isn't it? It's, it's great. It's that good. And um, the audio version of it is like, it's like an hour long. So it's, it's pretty easy to, it's pretty easy to just get into it. And I'm, I'm so excited about talking about art of war and how this is romance and how you can get your best relationship from simply 
from this, from these, from these natural law concepts. Um, this is what I wrote first. What we resist persists, right? And as much as I want to quote this, the one, the one quote that I have for my art of war, art of love and war piece is, ah, it's not even a quote. I'd be paraphrasing it. Essentially, okay, I paraphrase. Essentially, I sum up. Um, essentially, in the in the art of war, it talks about how when you are very, very close to your opponent, and I, I want to call them opponent rather than enemy, and you can transpose this for a man or your man being close to you. And this was illustrated quite well in the movie Hitch. Do you see how I'm just so excited? I'm leading in Hitch, where um, Hitch is teaching. You want to seem you want to you want to seem closer than you actually are. Right? This is like the courtship of flowers and cards and letters and good morning texts and phone calls and him showing up because otherwise, you know, we'd forget, essentially, right? We'd forget. And a man who is on a mission doesn't want to be forgotten. He wants to be front and center. So he's sending those flowers. So it's every time we see those flowers, every time we smell those flowers, it's the signal of, oh, that guy, right? The cards, the, the phone calls, the texts, all of those things are building moments. And so he seems closer than actually he is. He seems closer than he actually is. Okay. Now, and on the, on the reverse side is... I may actually be making this longer than the actual quote, but regardless, I hope I hope this is really I, I hope this is really juicy for you, really enticing. On the on the flip side of that is to seem far okay, so I said closer than you are. You want to seem closer than you are if you're far away. And you want to seem farther away if you're really close. So both sides of that coin right and you get it with war you get it with war you don't want the enemy to know you're around you don't want them to know but in romance this is i need space to breathe i'm gonna i'm, I'm not gonna hover i'm not i'm 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 going to be at enough of a space away that you can breathe that you can feel yourself, that your life still is your life. So that's kind of a, a, a sneak peek at the, the gorgeous things that we can learn from war, the, the gorgeous things that we can learn about love through war. And there's actually, I mean, oh my gosh. Um, uh, romance of the Three Kingdoms you heard of that if you're okay it's not actually a romance not in the traditional sense of like oh i love you so much but in the sense of in the sense of relationship dynamics what's important what you know this is it's like it's it's five thousand years of actually i don't know that the and I'm I'm I may be expanding this to the China. So this is this is China and the the romance of the kingdoms is essentially this this it's essentially a war is what it is. It's a very, very, very long war where these three kingdoms of China are very, very, very passionate about one country, one, 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 unity, one, one unified, one, one, a unified unit, which is, you know, it's, it's quite inspiring. It's quite inspiring. It reminds me of this utopian concept where we're all, you know, there it's, you know, heaven, 
heaven on earth and so many so many ancient civilizations and not so ancient civilizations have believed that the rulers of a country have been given authority from divine authority to rule to authority is i think a kind of a good word here and it has me running down all these paths of respect and masculine energy so we can we can go really 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 big with this and to bring it back down into what's happening with me and a man what's happening with me and my husband what's happening with me and my family with my children are you the you know are you are you are you Leo Bay are you you know are you Cao Cao are you you know who are you these are characters from Romance of the Three Kingdoms but um like who are you what's important to you how wh what is your fighting style what is and uh, yeah maybe I'll, I'll I'm, I'm just really excited that we could talk more about this let's go back to the topic at hand <laughs> eventually that'll be a whole class and I'll clean up all the other details and fact check things and we'll we'll have more of a conversation on this so how does agreeing with him how is that a ninja goddess move how is that a goddess move for bringing your man closer well when I start with we what what resists what we resist persists right and we're not absolutely not talking about tolerating crap behavior absolutely not we're not he's not going to say oh the sky is gray the sky the sky is green cows are purple and we're gonna go yeah sure maybe 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 there may be some circumstances where that completely applies to you and you're you have a, a mind blower moment okay it's not but it's not about agreeing to what is not in alignment it's not it's not about accepting subpar behavior it's not it's not about that at all this is not it's also it's also not this is what i wrote when i was feeling sassy earlier <laughs> and it's not about being a manipulative biatch either so like both sides, both sides. And then I ask the question, does it feel alluring to call it goddess level Aikido? Does it feel empowering to call it a Kung Fu love school protocol? Does that feel empowering? Does that feel cool? Does it feel like something that would interest you enough to want to explore more deeply to experiment does it does it appeal to you if it does then good if you're like no actually that's boring i hate it then maybe we can give it a different name for you okay martial arts i think it's so cool okay so in martial arts, as with so many things in life, you use everything that's thrown at you. Everything that's thrown at you. You use your body, you use your energy, you use the atmosphere. And so often we are compelled, compelled compelled to go against the grain and there are there's so many reasons for this and there are lovely reasons for this lots of lovely reasons for this you know polishing things pumice stones like think of anything that's really rough and scratchy and uh like a deep tissue massage you know where we're kind of going against what is but in a lovely way when things don't feel good and you're arguing when you'd rather be laughing you're yelling when you'd rather be 
loving, you are hugging, you know, you're, you're, you, you want to throw punches when what you really want in your heart of hearts, even if it doesn't really feel aligned is a hugging and kissing and canoodling and all of this stuff. Or maybe just really finding, just feeling like you've got a, a partner in life feeling like you're on the same side that you've got a battle buddy that somebody's got your six sometimes the most enlightened act of love is to agree so he says you're moody he says you're depressed he says you talk about your feelings all the time he says, you're dramatic. And you say yes. As much as it triggers you. Because if you're not reacting to the words that he's saying that aren't untrue, you know, because we can be, we can, we can get so reactive to a tone. We can, we can spit fire because of the way his eyebrow is part of the communication. No, it sounds small, but you, when you know, you know, you know, okay? It could be anything. It could be anything. Let's practice this together. I feel my, my whole self going. <laughs> you say yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And I also would say, feel this from the inside. The yes from here, the yes from here, the yes from where, where is that? Where is that? Where is that happening? Mm -hmm. Maybe you only can start with a guttural sound. And I say, that's cool. I say, that's groovy. I say, I say yes to guttural sounds. Mm. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. And that may sound more effortless, more flowy, more just out of your mouth onto the floor. That's something that I got from relationship guru Rory Ray and actor, director, extraordinaire. She's been one of my best acting coaches, acting directors as well. Let it fall out of your mouth. Just let it fall out of your mouth onto the floor. Okay. Most of us, we want to shoot arrows into him. We want to machete him with our words. Just let it fall on the ground. Okay. Rest your shoulders. Rest your heart. Lean back into your chair. If you're standing up, kind of just feel that connection with the earth. Okay. Yeah. See if you can soften. This is wild. Okay. If you're doing this with me and like feeling like I just, I, I feel it ripple through me. The, the urge to be like, oh, <laughs> or just want to protect, just want to protect myself, want to protect my body. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling moody. I'm feeling, I'm, I've, I've been feeling really out. I've been feeling really off. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm feeling really awful. Yeah. I've been talking about my feelings. Yes, I talk about my feelings. I've been feeling dramatic. So, if you put your attention here, your belly clenching, your voice, your vocal cords really, really tight, your shoulders going, oh, gotta protect, gotta protect, gotta protect. And see if you can gently, softly, even the tiniest little bit of, okay, I'm seeing myself, I'm hearing him and I want to beat that man. 
I want to tell him how wrong he is. I want him to apologize. Just come back to you. Just come back to you. You can do this. This will be a significant, significant shift for the relationship you want. Even if you are really in an awful, awful, bad, 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 bad place. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So if you can do this, think about, think about all the, think about all the wonderful things that can change very quickly if you can do this. And I'm not saying, well, if you can't do this, then forget it. Now, baby steps, okay? And this is, this is just the tip of the iceberg. I want to fight you. This may be the next thing that you are able to say once you're able to get into this space. I want to fight you. I do not want to agree with you, even if you're right. I don't know. I, even if you're right, I don't want to agree with you. If you're used to holding an opposite stance with your man, This is going to feel wild. This is going to feel wild. And on some levels, it's also going to feel so liberating. Speaking your truth, but not without performing it. If it's genuine, what you're saying is genuine. And you're able to say it from an open-hearted place. So this is why it's so important to come back to, okay, I'm breathing. I am aware of me. I am aware of me. I'm aware of my body. Thank you, body. I love you, body. Take a breath. I am anchored. And I'm feeling so mad at him. Yes, yes, yes. And I also, some part of me, some part of me doesn't want to walk away. Some part of me is so here, so here for this. And it's hard to really connect with that part of me that loves him and wants to kiss him because right now I want to hit him or I want to walk away. I want to scream. But do you see how we were, I'm, I'm saying we, because I'm like, you're doing it with me. You're doing it with me. You see how we were able to say this, express this from this space instead of a you need to be different why can't you or even like or even you know what I was gonna I was just gonna demonstrate I feel so I feel so angry I, I, I wanted to perform that in more of like a dramatic like don't do it this way sort of thing but like I think it just keeps coming out okay <laughs> I feel so angry right now you see with the, let it fall out, let it fall to the ground, let it fall to the ground. And you know what? Your man may inspire you to <laughs> push past all those cues, but just, just keep practicing. Practice with people who do not trigger the daylights out of you. Okay. And bit by bit, it will get easier. That love muscle will grow. The empathy will grow. And yeah, we, we can talk more about this. We Lots and lots and lots more. This got me excited. So Agreeing with him. Agreeing with him could be the, the the ninja goddess move you make that actually brings him closer, that shifts everything and helps you change everything fast, like a domino effect. Let me know how let me know how it works for you. Okay. Where are we? I think I did half of these and how to bring your relationship back from the brink of separation. Why good men don't treat you like the goddess you are. And okay, two more.
two more let's do two more and probably eventually i'll break this up into segments so you can watch it in little tiny bits and it's also just fun seeing it all in one place and one one big 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 training and you can let me know what felt the most useful for you and what you need what you want more of what you want more of okay so let's Okay, we just finished up how agreeing with him is the ninja goddess move to bring him closer. Okay. How to bring your relationship back from the brink of separation. Again, this is assuming you want him. You want him. This is assuming there is something in the relationship that is working for you. What is that? And if it's something like we're married and I don't feel good about divorce. I can't think of anything good about this man, but I am married to him and I don't feel good about divorce. Maybe that's your reason. Maybe that's enough of a reason for now. We'll build, okay? This is always a part of the discovery. We can have a million people telling us there's nothing there for you in the relationship. But if you still want a man, if you will still want the relationship, you still want the marriage. You have to listen to your gut. Well, you don't have to listen to your gut. Okay, let me rephrase that. One of the biggest gifts I believe can come to you through the coaching through coaching, through all of the self-development things, through the getting the library books and going to the seminars and doing the things and having the conversations and going to the meetup groups and doing the stuff is that you find you. The best coaches in the world, the, the, the best of the best out there can tell you a lot of things. But until we learn to listen to our gut, to learn to trust ourself, to listen to ourself, that's where, that's where the big magic is. Otherwise, we, we, can, we can live our whole life being told what to do and not feeling like we are capable of. This is kind of profound. And so I, I, I realize I'm looking away and kind of giving myself a moment to be with this, digest it a little bit. That we could live our whole lives not believing that we are capable of receiving the answers that we need of connecting to our source our inner self our higher self our god the universe and that's not something i ever want to believe again Okay. It's not something I want for you. It's something that that's a it's kind of a moment with any client I'm working with one on one. Because a lot of the times we hire a coach, we hire someone because we want them to tell us what to do because we don't have the answers. 
a lot of things that I'm excited to share. A lot of opinions I'm ready to share. But ultimately, this has to be about you and your relationship to you. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm hoping that got the space that it needed. And all of this, all of this, you with you. So when you find, I'll continue on with my notes. When you find yourself feeling like this relationship is in a very fragile place and I want to fix it. What does that feel like? What does that feel like? There's a lot of times we will find ourselves aware of this on the brink place, this falling, like I'm on the lip of something, I'm on the edge, I'm going to fall. You may, may call it like the other shoe dropping kind of sensation. Something is going to happen. I have this sinking feeling. And some of this relationship stuff is, part of it is a trust building that no matter what, I'm going to be okay. Kind of give me chills. Um, I lit a candle earlier. <laughs> it's not all that aesthetic. I didn't want to be all, you know, all the, all the energy over here, but I have a candle lit over here and a serenity prayer. I keep over here. It kind of came to me in a synchronistic type moment. So there is a candle burning and being part of the, the space here. If you don't know the serenity prayer, I'll just read it real quick. God, God grant us serenity to accept the things we cannot change, courage to change the things we can, and wisdom to know the difference. No, how can I trust that I'm loved even when I'm not in control? Sometimes the, some of these same phrases, I'm not in control, will feel scary. And then all of a sudden, it may seem liberating, totally liberating. It's not on me. What is my job? My job is to be here. My job is to feel. My job is to choose my words. My job is to look at that tree. My job is to put lotion on this dry spot. My job is to... What's my job? Okay, so that's an inner relationship dynamic happening. Something profound, something that felt very profound to me in my journey of being coached and coaching is this, I don't think it's more of a philosophy actually, of one, one, one relationship that every person out there is somehow mirroring back something that we believe about ourselves. And I'm, I'm, I'm aware that there is quite a large dialogue of people who will say, oh, well, this can be really, really toxic. Anything can be toxic. So to step away from that, if you are using any of these things, any platitude, anything, any life philosophy, anything to beat yourself up, to make yourself wrong, to keep yourself small, my desire, my my heart's desire for you is that you can catch it, become aware of it, and move through where you're at, where that's at, if 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 that's also in alignment with you. It has so it's it's just been one of those sparkly feeling things to me when it hasn't felt painful, right? 
it's one of those one of those things that can feel bad sometimes and then liberating that everything is a reflection of what's happening here because if i refuse to leave not my fault i'm getting beaten up it's not your fault if you're getting beaten up but if i can't leave what else do i need to see back to my notes here kind of really i really wanted to i really wanted to touch and mold and 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 lead into that too many times we will find ourselves aware of this on the brink place but think through power think strategize and go total masculine energy where we're stepping on a man's toes and that's the important part I'm on the brink. I got to save it. Something's wrong. And in our trying to think through things, trying to figure it out, like that alone, the energy that we're kicking up, just trying to think through things as it pertains to him, our man, our husband, our boyfriend, this important man in our life who we say on some level we want to support the team where he is we want to support the relationship team where he is the masculine predominant player and you are the predominantly feminine energy player right on some level we're saying that but we can't we won't stop thinking for him we won't stop thinking for the relationship. And when that happens, it's like we're 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 stomping all over his toes. He can't breathe. He can't think. There's no room. Like that. I know, I know I've written about this a bunch of times. This energy bubble concept, this bubble of love, right? There's just the energy inside this bubble, this relationship bubble. If you're going feminine energy. If you're choosing feminine energy and yet you're like, how do I fix this? What do I do? What do I say? Where we're thinking our way through, we're strategizing instead of like really facing what's the feeling, what's important to us, using our masculine energy to support our feminine and I'm, I'm like, it's tricky to say that in this situation when in these times where we're like, what are you doing? Can we talk about it, please? We think that's, you know, our masculine, our masculine energy really is all about trying to feel better. So you could say that's in support of the feminine, but it just isn't effective. Not when you're trying to repair things, not when you're trying to Bring him, bring him back, bring him closer, bring him back from the brink, bring your relationship back from the brink. Okay. That's the kiss of, the kiss of death, the kiss of death. He can't feel our heart. If we're too busy thinking, fixing, and not feeling not facing the fear, that fear of feeling like you might be on the brink. You're not home. No one's here. And if we're not here, he can't feel us. That's where we need to be. I love you so much. I want this. I want us. I'm feeling so scared. These aren't the words just yet. This is you being home in your heart. Face it. Face what's here. Okay, and then I just got more sassy in here. Let that fear completely shatter you. Let's be completely dramatic about the wording. That's what I wrote. <laughs> Let's get completely dramatic about the wording. 
because that's what your head's going to say. I'm going to be shattered. You're going to be shattered. I'm going to protect you from this. These are, this is, this is, this is the commentary that you'd be using when you tell your best girl, when your girlfriends, when you enlist your girl squad to help you recover. I'm completely shattered, right? If you're like, okay, well, our relationship, it just fell apart. I'm completely shattered. I know I'm, I'm, I'm hamming this up because I, I want you to, I, I want to set you at ease just a little bit. I'm making fun of the situation. And I get it. I get it. And I, I'd, I'd love for us to have a fun space to turn over the rocks of what doesn't feel good, the caverns of our hearts, walk through the tunnels of our souls together in a way that feels fun and we can laugh and joke. That feels good to me. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that's you too. If you're part of, if you're part of this tribe, if you're here, if you're watching this. We're all afraid of feeling pain, of feeling discomfort. So is a man. And that's another reason why it is so important for us as feminine energy creatures to, I guess, respect that about ourselves. You know, if you can, you know, I'm gonna, this feels so scary. I don't want to look at this. And I really respect my role in the relationship as a deep feeler. See hey, what that does for you. We're all afraid of discomfort, yet can't really articulate what feels good. That's the other part of this. We can't articulate what feels good. This is this is another part of this. So meeting ourselves where we are. I'm not feeling good. Okay, can I love that I'm aware that I'm not feeling good? This may be a stretch, but the idea is. And this is this is where it gets juicy, and I'm like I'm like I want to I want to lean in, like okay, get here's here's the good stuff here, okay. And so instead, I'm going to lean back, and we're going to get that on my shoulder. Okay. Curled my hair. Had a prettification moment this morning, and so this is kind of fun doing the doing the video and being here together, right? Okay, so so many of us. touch something, resituate, okay. We can't really articulate what feels good. That's part of this grand adventure of getting better and 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 better at articulating what feels amazing, expressing what feels amazing. There is, in part of just sharing what feels good, we're literally sharing what feels good, okay? A little cheeky there. We're sharing what feels good through verbally sharing what feels good, okay? <laughs> I feel like we've just, we've just shared a secret, okay? What's important? Through sharing what's important. What we appreciate, okay? Appreciation, okay. This, this is the practice here. This is this is the big secret in all of this. I'm gonna say secret. This is this is a key element here. How can we get really, really, really good at saying, at expressing, at feeling, being aware of what good feels like, what feeling at ease, what feeling peaceful, what feels, you know, just connected and happy and you know, just you know, like this. Can we get really good at connecting with our feeling of what's important? Of what we appreciate. And I have my own little soapbox speech about 
appreciation. <laughs> appreciation is, yeah, I'm doing the ham voice, okay? Appreciation is all about being involved in the value increase. I get so excited about this. This is a really, really, really cool concept and one I, I fully intend to get so gritty with you about. Appreciation, right? Making things more valuable, making people more valuable, making yourself more valuable, making moments more valuable, giving more value to things. Not, not empty value, no. For real, authentic. Okay, and then I move on, right? If we, if, 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 if we'll go into the deep caverns of our hearts and our bodies and our souls, we'll be so much closer to a man, be so much closer to the repair, the fix, the what we want than when we go turbo and try to talk it through when we try to work it out, when we try to figure it out. It's not what we want to do. It really isn't. It's completely opposite, topsy-turvy, upside down. It really is. And yet, this is the way to what we want. Mythology story just popped into my head. Not, And I'm like, I don't know that that's even useful. It was the... Um, What's the do you do you know the the story of the guy who goes down to Hades and asks for his wife back and and they they strike up a bargain do you you know that one anyway I'm not really sure that it's helpful in this situation <laughs> but it, it may it may it may come back around sometime okay so don't go turbo don't go turbo and try to talk it through. And yes, sometimes talking is going to be part of the repair. Sometimes it will be, but let it be or get let it organically follow the process and let it organically unfold for you. The issue, the issue here is that too often we skip the very, very ultimately crucial feminine energy secret that brings our man close. Oh, I love my sassy little moments. So I referenced Indiana Jones here. The crucial feminine energy secret that brings you, brings your man close and gives you that Indiana Jones moment, the, you know, the leap of faith path that you can't see. I think this is a reference from uh, The Last Crusade. That was a good one. Um, Sean Connery give you that Indiana Jones leap of faith path you can't see, but is very much there when things feel like they're falling apart all around you. Take a breath and remember, you are a feminine creature. You are a feminine creature with formidable, and I, I write this twice, formidable in all caps, formidable, formidable i like that word apparently formidable love power you are a feminine creature i am a feminine creature let's say it together i am a feminine creature with formidable love power going on okay that was fun that was fun okay i think we're down to the last yeah, the last one in today's segment, and then we'll wrap up for today because I really, I, I really want to get this, really want to get this to you as quickly as possible. And if you, if you see this today, then wow, we're, 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 we're. How lovely. <laughs> Lionsgate. Happy Lionsgate. Okay. Why good men don't treat you like the goddess you are? Are you ready? Ready for this? Okay. 
why good men don't treat you like the goddess you are. Good, bad. Some of these labels really don't help us. They don't help us navigate the feminine trail to enduring love, enduring intimacy, and partnership that we want. And yet, it's probably one of the most phenomenal ways we like to kick ourselves in the butt. <laughs> this is good. This is bad. Good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. I think it is splendid to have an opinion, to have a preference, to know. And yet, when we run on autopilot, when we let our subconscious just run the show, which is kind of more of the time than not, because we don't really think about breathing, except when we're, you know, I'm taking a cleansing breath, I'm taking a breath of love, I'm consciously doing this, I'm consciously looking at this, I'm consciously doing this. I'm... There's a lot of things that just go autopilot. And so, like, a lot of the ways that we tell ourselves, oh, you should do this, you should do that. And it can be a, oh, we should do this because it's exciting. Or it's a, you should do this because this is what success looks like. This is what good is. That is what bad is. Actor's voice, I know. I, I just, let's, let's, let's let that character be part of the show so we can love it. We can love you. Who is this part of you? This is good. This is bad. So. Here, we're in this place of good men, good men, and bad men. All right, already, we've already such a big concept in just a small little, small, small little one-liner, okay? Just, this is a phenomenally sneaky way that we beat ourselves up. And then I ask, who's your favorite shoulder angel? <laughs> we're red or white? <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Silly, silly, silly. But again, if it makes you giggle a little bit, then maybe it'll stick with you. Maybe it'll stick with you in the next moment where you hear yourself saying, oh, good or bad. What am I saying is good? And can you drill down more? Yeah. So why do some men, see, why do some men really not see you as the goddess you are? Why do some men ask you to split the bill? Why do some men ask you to drive to meet him instead of picking you up? Why do some men not ask you how you feel and take that into consideration when making plans? Why do some men not make plans? Why are we not being treated the way we want to be treated? It's kind of the bigger question, right? That's kind of the, the bigger pain point. Why am I not being treated the way I want to be treated? Because... A woman, and I love this, okay, this kind of just came to me. A woman, this goddess, glorious creature of a woman, would be treated a certain way. Men would just treat her the way that she, you know, like a goddess. And I'm like, is that really true? Or does she, does that woman just exude a... Not bitch-like quality, but a, I love me and I love where I'm at and I love the choices that I've made and I love adventure. And even, even if it feels scary, even if the adventure is not exactly the most wonderful, 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 wonderful feeling thing, even in the, gosh, this feels so scary and wild and I feel so glad I can feel my wild feelings and that I'm so aware that I can take things slower. What about that? What is what is a goddess woman? What 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 qualities does she have? 
I, I keep raising my eyebrows. I'm like, oh, we should talk about this because I my the the first gift that I want to give all of my love lifestyle girlies, my 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 tribe, my love lifestyle tribe is this meet your inner goddess experience. It's I've I've called it a meditation tool. I've recorded a couple of different versions. I probably will want to record more different versions of this. And the first email that you get from me is currently right now, um, is one of the first emails that you get from me, not only goes into this goddess meditation, but also gives you a worksheet to further just explore what this is for you. Who is she? What do you want? What, what happens when you connect with her? And I think this tool is slept on a little bit, okay? Because we go, well, how is this going to get me? So I'm like, ah, maybe I should answer that question too. Well, or have a, you know, have a love conversation about it. So, so we, we, we may, okay. Because I, I just am seeing how excited I got about this. <laughs> maybe you could see it too. All right. Why are we not being treated the way we want to be treated? Well, how well do you know what this is like? And because it's fun, this is me reading my notes, because it's fun, I'll reference one of my favorite shows. It's been done. It's been done and named different things. You may, you may have seen My Fair Lady. It's also been done. Like it's the same, it's the same show, same concept. I think me, my fair lady is the Pygmalion just with music. And if you've not seen it, then put it on your watch list. If you're, you know, if you're into my vibe. There's two men. There's two men making, so this is kind of a synopsis here. There's two men who, like gentlemen, men, man who make a wager about their ability to transform a girl in the streets who's awesomely feisty and has the real heart of an entrepreneur. She's, she's just glorious. And at one point, this girl, Eliza Doolittle, she says how one man, one of these two gentlemen, treats her better. And the response she got back was... Oh, we're both the same. We're the same. And as iconic as the line is, I'm really just, I'm really just um, sharing, sharing the experience of it. It's not going to be a direct quote, right? He says, we're the same. It's such an iconic, it's such an iconic part of the show. And um, this is something else that I think we could have an enormous amount of fun talking about what we what we can get from shows and even when the show is literally so awful you that's what you tell your you know that's the reviews that you give people is like wow that was a terrible show wow I can't wow the wow is how awful it was <laughs> and it could be oh my gosh so yeah, showbiz and acting and all of that stuff. That could be a fun other topic. We should talk about it. Anyway, the response Eliza gets is we're both the same. So, and, and he, he extrapolates to say he treats every woman like a duchess. Like every, every, every woman he treats as royalty. And me, I treat everyone as if they're a street girl. So you see the same may have, and, and you know, it had, you, you hear it and you're like, oh my gosh, that's not the same. And yet, and yet, and yet, right. And yet dot, dot, dot. And yet, is it really not? Lots to unpack here in the end of the show, the last scene of the show, Eliza actually chooses the man who is kind of crotchety it's it's yeah lots to unpack there <laughs> oh okay well that's i got to the end of the notes there and 
wrapping up can always have such a feeling to it where I'm like a part of me already feels that we're connected through time and space and the internet and right now it is it is 7 49 p.m and by the time I get this edited to the to the extent that I feel happy with it and up so that you can watch it I think we should probably end here and then yeah let me know how this lands for you let me know what you need and I had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun making this video for you today. And I would, I would love it if you would share with a friend you could talk about this with, that you could, could be your, your battle buddy in the, in the landscape of love. I would, I would love it if you shared this with a friend. And let me know, just let me know how it lands. Let's, let's, let's continue making a community out of this. All right. So my love to you, my love to you. And as much as it is so difficult to say adieu for now, goodbye for now, we'll say goodbye for now. Every commitment you make to your love lifestyle is a big deal. And every little step matters. Give this video a like, subscribe for notifications, and share it with a friend who gets it. I'm so excited to hear how this resonates with you. So drop a comment and let's chat. I'm so glad you're here.